As per the commitment made six weeks ago, I'm here today to provide an overview of the triple homicide investigation in Northern British Columbia and the subsequent search for the accused suspects. From the time that we received first the call about the suspicious deaths of the two individuals south of Liard River Hot Springs on July 15th, to the day we located the two deceased suspects almost 3,000 kilometers away in Manitoba 23 days later, significant work has been done to answer the many questions that we the police, the families of the deceased, and many members of the public had. Over the course of the investigation and search for the two accused, the BCRCMP dedicated a large number of resources and specialized units to this complex, fast-moving investigation. The RCMP received over 1,500 tips from the public through the dedicated phone tip line, reports to 911 call centers, front counter reports to police detachments, and crime stoppers. Between July 16, 2019 and August 4, 2019, 19 judicial authorizations were executed to further this investigation. An extensive amount of CCTV video was collected during the investigation and thousands of hours of recordings were reviewed and analyzed. During the investigation, a number of partner agencies assisted the RCMP. This included American and Australian police agencies as well. The BC Prosecution Service, the, Can the Canadian Border Service Agency, the Coroner Services in British Columbia and Manitoba, conservation officers, search and rescue in the Canadian military. And we thank them all. We have taken the totality of the investigative findings, including a review of the digital and physical evidence, statements, tips, and forensic examination reports, and have compiled a public report that we are issuing today. While we have been able to gain greater clarity on the movements and the actions of the two accused, we respect that the answers have not reduced the trauma and the grief experienced by the families of Lucas Fowler, China Dees, and Leonard Dick. We ensured that the victims' families were made aware of the information that we would be releasing publicly, and we continue to provide them with support. We also continue to support families of the accused. The report does address a number of areas and specifics in, in much greater detail, but I would like to highlight and confirm the following. <clears throat> we uncovered no information that predicted or forecasted that the homicides took place in uh, northern BC. There was no indication that these were, were planned or predicted. Based on the firearms lab results, crime scene examination, timelines of suspects and suspect recorded admissions, we believe that no other suspects were responsible for the three homicides or were involved in any way. The murders appear to be random and crimes of opportunity with no known motive. The investigative theory is that McLeod and Schmigelski came across Lucas Fowler's van and targeted Lucas Fowler and China Dees for unknown reasons. They shot and killed the couple before continuing up through to the Yukon. The two returned to BC days later because they were having vehicle issues and came across Mr. Leonard Dick outside of Dee's Lake and shot and killed him. The suspects then burned their vehicle to cover up evidence and delay police before stealing Mr. Dick's vehicle, money, and a number of other personal items, all of which facilitated further escape ultimately towards Eastern Canada. Once they reached Manitoba, they burned the stolen vehicle and attempted to continue on foot. It is believed that McLeod shot Schmigelski before shooting himself in a suicide pact. Two rifles were found with the deceased suspects. These rifles were examined by the firearms lab and were determined to be the same weapons used in the Fort Nelson and Dees Lake homicides, as well as their own deaths. One of the two guns was determined to be the same gun legally purchased by the suspects at Cabela's Outdoor Equipment Store in Nanaimo on July 12th. A digital camera belonging to Mr. Dick was also discovered. It contained six videos and three still images. 
In the videos, the suspects took responsibility for all three murders. They indicated no remorse for their actions, as well as their intentions to potentially kill others. They also described their intent to commit suicide and their wish to be cremated. These videos do not contain any information regarding the motive behind their actions, nor do they provide specifics regarding the murders. While a number of additional facts and findings are being released today, the RCMP has chosen not to release the videos that we've, been, that we've recovered. The RCMP Behavioral Analysis Unit conducted a review of the videos and was concerned with a behavior called identification, which is considered a warning behavior in the context of threat assessments. The videos may influence or inspire, inspire other individuals to carry out a targeted act of violence, essentially creating copycats. In their experience, those who commit mass casualty attacks or similar acts of violence are heavily inspired by previous attackers and their behaviors. It is believed that the suspects may have made the video recordings for notoriety. Releasing them would not only be disrespectful to the families of the deceased, who are also concerned about the impact of the release, but it could sensationalize the actions of the suspects. By not releasing the videos, we want to mitigate the potential for other individuals being inspired to commit similar acts of violence. For these reasons, the video will not, the videos will not be released by the RCMP. I'd like to thank our RCMP colleagues in British Columbia, Alberta, Saskatchewan, Manitoba, other law enforcement agencies that assisted us for all the support and assistance. In particular, I'd like to uh, once again acknowledge the RCMP in, in Manitoba, who led an exhaustive and challenging search in that province. I would also like to thank the public, whether it was the hundreds of individuals who came forward with information, the individuals, businesses, or agencies who assisted our investigators on the ground in northern BC and the other communities that were directly impacted, We'd also like to acknowledge and thank the greater Canadian public at large who showed vigilance and patience as we worked diligently to advance this investigation. We know that this file has had impacts provincially, nationally, as well as internationally. Many, many have been affected, but none more so than the grieving Fowler, Dees and Dick families. We're hopeful that the release of the public report and our investigative findings provides greater clarity into this investigation and subsequent search. Thank you, everyone.